We haven't seen a playoff baseball game since Sunday night when the Dodgers clinched the National League pennant. The Yankees haven't been in action in nearly a week since clinching their first American League pennant in 15 years on Saturday night in Cleveland. Finally, the opening day of the World Series begins on this Friday. It is game number one at Chavez Ravine in downtown Los Angeles. It's two of the most iconic brands in sport but certainly in Major League Baseball, squaring off for a title. It's the Yankees, it's the Dodgers in the 2024 Fall Classic, the 12th ever time these two teams have met in a World Series. If you are baseball, this is what you want. Now, Joe, there have been some that said, oh, it's the two richest payrolls in the sport. It's these two front runners that always are buying people and not earning what they are given. It is iconic. So enjoy the prestige of this World Series. Game number one tonight, the Dodgers a home favorite. Jack Flaherty gets the nod for Dave Roberts. Of course, the ace on the other side for the pinstripes in Garrett Cole, which dictates, of course, the outright price for this World Series. The Dodgers an ever so slight outright favorite at minus 122. The series total games over five and a half has the hefty VIG at minus 180. The Yankees on the series spread is plus one and a half at minus 190. Joe, just to make it a little bit more, uh, you know, lay person, if you will, for the Yankees to cash the plus one and a half, they would either have to lose in seven games or they would have to win the World Series, which goes to show you that the Dodgers are the outright favorites, but the Yankees getting a game and a half in the series spread. The odds makers think this one is destined for seven. Will it live up to the hype and the excitement here in these next few weeks? I, I you, you have to think it will, uh, Ben, with the firepower on both of these sides. Uh, and Major League Baseball would love nothing more than to get seven games out of Judge versus Otani with a Mookie Betts, Juan Soto sideshow, uh, mix in a little Garrett. Co- I, I mean, the storylines in this are just over the top, not to mention Mr. October himself, Giancarlo Stanton. I mean, when you when you go down to lineups and what these two teams are bringing to this, this is now the 12th meeting in the World Series between these two franchises. It is the most common World Series matchup in the history of the yep. sport, Ben. And that tells you how big these two franchises are. To have them on center stage with the biggest names in the sports, this could very well yep. go down as the biggest World Series, most popular World Series we've seen in a very long time. And that's saying something given all the competition we have these days. This ain't the 50s with Mickey Mantle and nobody else to watch. This is a totally different era, and I think it's going to be the most watched World Series ever, especially if it goes seven games. Listen, it is going to be sensational. In the series, correct score market, the shortest price, that is the team Mm -hmm. to win, and in how many games? It's the Dodgers in six at plus 420, but then it's the Dodgers in seven at plus 470, and then the Yankees in seven at five to one. Those three outcomes, the three shortest and most likely decisions in this World Series, separated by just 80 cents under a buck of course this will be the 12th all-time meeting in a fall classic between the pinstripes and the dodgers the yankees have been dominant in the head-to-head they have won eight of the first 11 the most recent one was in 1981 where la flipped the script because of this young rookie who won nl rookie of the year and cy young the only guy to ever do so his name fernando valenzuela And, of course, Joe, it was sad news in the baseball world Mm. earlier this week. Fernando passing away at the age of 64. He was a guy that turned Los Angeles on its head in the early 80s. He was a revolution for this Dodgers organization. There will be many celebrations of the great Dodger, Fernando Valenzuela, tonight. And, of course, that atmosphere only adds to the energy ahead of the opening game of this World Series. Let's compare these two teams, Joe. The Dodgers, through the NLDS, had to knock off the Padres in five games. There was a time they trailed in that series with their season on the brink in San Diego. Dave Roberts said, all right, bullpen game. Let's get them out there. And Ryan Brazier and the rest of the crew did deliver. They were dominant in the set against the Mets. New York did take 
two games, high scoring in all six. The margins in those games, not exactly tight. The shortest margin, the Mets winning game two by four runs. Every game in the American League Championship Series for the Yanks over the Guardians in five, three runs or less. Joe, the tail of the tape, the path to this fall classic. Who do you think has looked better? Who do you think has had a more favorable path to this World Series? How do you compare these two squads? Well, well, I think the, let's just call the lineups a wash. uh, Because, and and looking at some of these numbers, we all know the top half of the order is about as star power driven as you're going to see in any major league baseball team. Uh, The reason the Dodgers and the Yankees in this postseason are here right now is because of what the bottom half of the orders have done in the postseason, Ben. You've got the seven, eight, nine hitters on both teams batting close to 270 in the postseason, yeah. setting the table for the top of the order with the Yankees and the Dodgers. And that's just bad news for anybody. And that's going to be a big part of this series here is can the pitching staffs keep the seven, eight, nine hitters off the damn bases. So Mookie Betts, and then, of course, uh, turning it over for the Yankees with Judge and Soto. And Sa- can they keep those guys off the base? Right. The only advantage I see between these two teams is the Yankees' rotation is that much better than what the for Dodgers sure. are going to bring to the table. They need Cole to be the best. They need Rodon to be the second best. And then after that, They got to let the bats do the work, and the Yankees have a very good shot at winning this World Series. And, Joe, that is a huge story entering this fall classic. The Dodgers made many off-season acquisitions. None bigger, of course, than Shohei Otani. But Yoshi Yamamoto was a prized get as well. So was Tyler Glass now, who was the ace of the staff all year long in L.A., of course, is out for the rest of this season, has not pitched in the postseason, hasn't pitched for quite some time for the Dodgers. At the deadline, they acquire the L.A. native in Jack Flaherty, It's been very helter-skelter on the bookends of his three starts. He was great in the opener of the NLCS against the Mets. He gave up seven earned runs to New York last Friday night in game number five up in Queens. There is no doubt in my estimation the Yankees have that pitching edge. You could argue the Padres did, and it was pretty much even with the Mets and the Dodgers as well. But what's so fascinating, Joe, about this Dodgers team, an offensive all-star lineup, Otani, Betts, Freeman, you can keep going, Max Muncy went healthy, Will Smith, Teoscar Hernandez, the home run derby champ, Kike Hernandez has been incredible in this postseason. So when you look at the Dodgers, who in their four wins in the National League Championship Series against New York, scored at least eight runs in all four. All right, what, Shohei Otani hit six home runs, ran away with NLCS MVP. Muncy was great at the dish. Mookie Betts does everything. Tommy Edmond, the guy who hadn't played all year for St. Louis, acquired at the deadline with Michael Kopech, by the way, who started game number six for L.A., batted 407. He had 11 RBIs and was the NLCS MVP. The fact that that is happening for the Dodgers at this most significant time, of course, of their calendar year, it's just monumental for L.A. Yeah, it it truly is. I I mean, it's – and, boy, wouldn't it it have been nice to have somebody like Kershaw available to him here as well, man, right? Wouldn't it it have been great to have him just to add another stroke to the fire for storylines? Having Kershaw out there would have been fantastic. But, hey, listen, similar paths, different, um, different obstacles to get over for both these teams. But at the end of the day, great pitching or great hitting wins a World Series. Which is it, Ben? We shall see. Live right here on the early line, it's the opening day of the 2024 World Series. Joe, before we break down game number one, the pitching matchup between the Yankees, Garrett Cole, and the Dodgers, Jack Flaherty, here are the World Series MVP odds. A slight change from the top 10 of yesterday. Garrett Cole was not in the top 10. Now he is at 33 to one. The favor to Shohei Otani makes a ton of sense at a short price at plus 230. Aaron Judge, who's going to win American League MVP at 5-1. to one. Of course, Judge has not been overly prolific or productive in this postseason for the Yankees. Juan Soto has, plus 550. Buki Betts has for LA, plus 750. And Giancarlo Stanton, 
five home runs in this playoff run for the pinstripes. All five long balls in the sixth inning or later. He has been absolutely clutch for New York. And notice that, Joe. Of the five best prices, three play for New York. Only two, Betts and Otani, play for the World Series favorites in L.A. Yeah, it's kind of bonkers, isn't it? But I guess really that's the way it it should be, right? You got the game's best in both divisions uh, leading their teams to uh, to a chance at a World Series title. The interesting thing there is the Freddie Freeman story, given the fact that his ankle has been trashed. Uh, And don't forget, Ben, the championship series. I mean, he's listed as a 30 to one MVP right now. He may not even play in a couple of these games he became a liability at first base he's hitting you know 200 in the postseason this guy was mr always postseason here uh but that ankle could be a very big issue for the dodgers and for freddie freeman moving forward so it would be great if he was healthy but i i think freeman's going to be a non-factor in this series and i think that's advantage yankees And then you look at the rest of the board, of course, after the top five, and it's four Dodgers led by Max Muncy, Teoscar Hernandez. You mentioned Frederick and Freddie Freeman and Kike Hernandez, not even the NLCS MVP in Tommy Tommy Edmond for L.A. makes that top 10. Yesterday, Cole was 35 to 1, $2 shaved off the price at 33 to 1. The anticipation, Joe, if the Yankees are going to win this World Series title, it starts tonight in game number one with an absolute ace domination by Garrett Cole. He has been solid for the Yankees throughout this postseason. He was lights out to clinch the set against the Kansas City Royals. He hasn't been necessarily dominant in his other two outings, but he has been good. Jack Flaherty for the Dodgers gave up four earned runs in his opening start against San Diego. That was game number two. Blanked the Mets and only allowed two hits in the opening game of the NLCS and then got rocked for seven earned last Friday night in Queens against the Amazons. It's been some good with a lot of bad here for Flaherty in the postseason. And here are the odds for game number one tonight at the Ravine, downtown L.A., first pitch scheduled just after 8 p.m. Eastern. The Dodgers, a slight favorite, four cents of difference, Joe. That's it. From the outright price to win a World Series to the numbers for game number one on the money line. Total eight and a half, maybe not what you would expect in the opening game of a World Series with the aces on the bump. But, of course, as we saw in all six games in that NLCS for the Dodgers and Mets, at least eight runs in all six, nine-plus over this number in five of those six contests. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting number, uh, Ben, given the fact that, you know, both teams have had some time to rest here. uh, And you've got, you know, the aces on the mound here. This is going to be uh, an interesting one here. Is this going to be a 2-1, 3-1 kind of game? Or is this going to be, uh, are the bullpens are going to come in uh, earlier than expected, and that's going to be a problem moving forward? Listen, we knew the uh, uh, some of these series would be an over series. We didn't expect it to be an over series with the Guardians and Yankees, but we certainly yeah. got some runs in that series, didn't we? Uh, and the same thing with the Dodgers and the Mets, so... Uh, yeah, I get why the market is there, but I'd be way more inclined to look at an under in this spot than I would an over in game one. Uh, it's almost just based on principle. The opening game of the World Series with both teams having some days off and at least at this moment, their ace of the staff on the bump, one legitimate ace in Gary Cole, not taken away from Jack Flaherty. It would have been Tyler Glass now had he been healthy, just all to say. That number should be seven, seven and a half. It is eight and a half. But Joe, to your point, the Dodgers, of course, explosive in the offensive ranks against the Mets and frankly, all year. It's not like the Yankees Mm. and the Guardians were devoid of offense in that series. All five games with at least seven runs. Three of the five would have been over this total of eight and a half. But again, Joe, when you break down this series, depth of offensive lineup, you probably give the edge to the Dodgers. The superstars are the superstars, maybe performing top to bottom better for the Dodgers right now at the dish because Aaron Judge has not been all that great in the postseason, much better late in that series against the Guardians. But the pitching matchup and the advantage, that's in favor of New York, which will be represented Mm -hmm. tonight with Garrett Cole on the bump. 
What do the Yankees need out of Cole to win game number one tonight in L.A.? They need him to be the best pitcher in the series, and they need him to be the ace. Uh, it's that simple. I mean, listen, give Flaherty all the credit in the world. There have been questions about his health since he's been traded, uh, Ben, and, and he has shown signs of uh, a little bit of fatigue and maybe some arm issues there, but he is a gutty dude uh, without a doubt. I mean, he has given up three runs or more in five of his last six starts. Uh, don't forget, he had that eight-run outing against the Padres back in uh, the middle of October. So uh, he is he's the biggest question mark. They need Cole to go out and be Cole. The reason they gave yep. you that bag of money was for this spot right here. Nothing else matters. Go out and shut down the Dodger lineup and win game one of the World Series. In terms of those offensive superstars, Aaron Judge has the shortest price to hit a home run. He hit a long ball in back-to-back -back games in the ALCS, games two and three against the Guardians. But again, in this postseason for Judge, he is just five of 31, batting 161. Shohei Otani, good throughout the postseason. Mookie Betts has delivered as well. You mentioned the ankle injury to Freddie Freeman. We'll see how prolific he can be. Juan Soto and Giancarlo Stanton, though, the main drivers of this Yankees offense all postseason long.